There's a pretrial hearing tomorrow for the former Minneapolis police officers charged in the death of George Floyd. Derek Chauvin is charged with second degree manslaughter and second degree murder in Floyd's death. Floyd's death was caught on camera by a bystander as the white officer kneeled on Floyd's neck until he lost consciousness, sparking weeks of protests in Minnesota and around the country as a result of his death. With me now is Rashawn Ray. He is in the Department of Sociology at the University of Maryland and a David M. Rubenstein Fellow at the Brookings Institution. Uh, good to see you. So right now the House and Senate are at odds over a national police reform bill. What do you believe needs to be part of that? What should happen now? So as you noted, well, first, thank you for having me on, Frederica. As you noted, Dems and Republicans are at a stalemate. And my research suggests that police department insurance policies is a way to deal with qualified immunity. Of course, qualified immunity gives police officers civil uh, protections, but oftentimes that supply is carrying over to the criminal side. And so we need to bring Democrats and Republicans together to get a police reform bill passed, which is what the public actually wants. Do you believe there should be qualified immunity? I think that qualified immunity has a lot of problems wrapped up in it. What's important for people to recognize is that qualified immunity is a legislation that applies to civil culpability, meaning that a police officer who is acting underneath the law cannot be sued financially. Eventually, George Floyd's family is going to get a large civil payout. The problem with qualified immunity is that it then applies oftentimes to the criminal side. So there are a lot of people, juries, prosecutors, and judges, who don't think that police officers should be prosecuted. And the problem in this case is that Derek Chauvin still qualifies for upwards of about a million dollars in pensions. That's something that Minnesota as a state should change and follow suit for other states across the United States. You're also calling for a restructuring of how officers are trained. To what extent? So currently, when you look across the country, police officers receive about 60 hours of firearm training, but they only receive about eight hours of de-escalation training. We know that de-escalation training reduces police killings by about 15%. However, police officers are training to the exact opposite. They are training to worst case scenarios. They are training to actually use force. And that's not what we need on the street when nine out of 10 interactions they have have oftentimes nothing to do with violence and simply has to do with the conversation like we've seen with George Floyd and like the way it originally started with Rashard Brooks. Mm -hmm. Uh, correctional officers of color on uh, the floor that was housing former uh, officer Derek Chauvin were um, reassigned at one point. Is this part of a history of protecting racists in the justice system as you see it? Unfortunately, it is. I mean, this is highly problematic. And for people who don't really realize what happened here, Derek Chauvin was being protected in a prison for murdering someone. And we've seen this throughout history and also more recently when Dylan Roof murdered nine people at an AME church in South Carolina. After they picked him up and he had a weapon on him, officers then took him to Burger King. But yet and still black men's uh, bodies are underneath police officers' knees. And when we see minority officers being reassigned to supposedly protect Derek Chauvin, we see the ways in which racists are protected by the state. And these are some of the reasons why people are protesting in the streets. Mm -hmm. Rashawn Ray, thank you so much. Always good to see you. Appreciate thank it. Thank you.